grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Our, our time together this morning is going to be spent looking a little bit at that Joshua chapter 3 passage, but a little bit more time looking at the passages that come right after that. Uh, Joshua chapter 4. Four. Um, if you've never read the book of Joshua, um, I, I highly encourage you to do so. It's a, it's a fun and fantastic book of the Bible to read. Joshua chapter 3, if you remember, uh, in, our, in our reading from this morning, it, it dealt with the Israelites crossing over uh, the, the Jordan. And, and as they crossed over the Jordan, they, they, they had to encounter a huge problem. And the problem that they encountered as they crossed over the Jordan was the fact that it was flood stage. And that doesn't mean a whole lot to you and me, but the flood stage for this particular river was pretty magnificent. The flood stage for the Jordan River actually meant it would swell feet feet above, and it would become a raging river. I mean, I'm not talking like a stream that goes down, but I'm talking rolling white caps running down this river, and it would go multiple feet in either direction outside of its banks, and you just could not get a people that large to cross the Jordan. And so Joshua is leading the people, following God's command to cross over the Jordan River, and he just can't do it. But what he can't do, God knows how to do. Stones. Stones are extremely, extremely sturdy, very endur- enduring. They, they last for a long time. Uh, we've been on vacation numerous times, and, and when we go on vacation, sometimes to outdoor locations, we, uh, n- not in any, any preserved areas, but we'll find a, a rock that's kind of cool sitting on the side of the road, and we'll toss it in the back of the car, and we'll bring it home as a reminder of our vacation. And we have a couple of them sitting out front of our house right now. And those rocks have stayed the same size since we picked them up. It rains, it snows, it gets hot, it gets cold, and those rocks never change in size. They just stay exactly where they are the entire time. Rocks are sturdy things. As a matter of fact, many of the memorials and monuments that we have in our country are built out of stone. If you think about it, uh, we have monuments and memorials all over uh, Washington, D.C. that are built out of stone. But not just in D.C., we also find them in in other countries from years, hundreds of years, if not thousands of years ago. We have things like the Parthenon. It's still, by and large, standing, much like it has been for years. Why? Because stones last. Or there's the, the Great Pyramids, built out of limestone. Or perhaps the famous one, Stonehenge, whether it was made by man or some other form of God, or maybe it was aliens who descended and stacked them up like the movies want you to believe. It doesn't really matter how they got there. We just know that they're stone, and they're not going anywhere. Stones. Stones last. Stones are strong, and stones serve as great reminders, especially for you and me in our lives today. I want to read for you a little bit about what happens in uh, Joshua chapter 4. It's actually a a fun section of scripture. So you remember chapter 3, we just read that a minute ago. Nathan just read that for us. They they were looking at going across the Jordan and they they crossed the Jordan because they, they carried the Ark of the Covenant in front of them. You know what the Ark is. Maybe you've you've seen it in a movie, Indiana Jones. It was where the snakes were. He didn't like it. But you get it, the Ark. Joshua chapter 4, verse 1, When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man. Twelve tribes, one man from each tribe. Twelve men were to go into the Jordan and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. You see, he's getting stones of remembrance. God is telling Joshua to pick up these stones from the middle of the river and bring them to the land and make a monument of sorts. Twelve stones of remembrance. A stone for each tribe. It says later on that that when your children ask what happened, why are these stones here, you can use these stones as a reminder. Stones of remembrance They remind us of our past in our present 
for our future. You see, it says in the text that we are to use these stones as reminders for Israel of crossing the river. Now, I don't know about you, but that's probably not something that I would forget in my lifetime. As the the men crossed the Jordan River with the Ark of the Covenant, the water parted and stood straight up. That raging river that I was talking about, it just stopped and stood straight up, and they crossed on dry land. Over a million people likely crossed that river on dry land. I don't think I would have quickly forgotten. But set stones of remembrance, because it's so easy to forget. It's so easy to forget the details. It's so easy to forget the things that God does because we like to think about the things we do. So set these stones of remembrance. Stack them right there where you crossed the river. Let them remind you of your past. It says in in Joshua chapter 4 verse 6, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in the future times, what do these stones mean? You can tell them all about this day. You can tell them everything that happened in this moment. Stones serve as great reminders. Stones serve as these powerful reminders. I I went through a, a class when I was in high school, and we did this prayer thing, and we got a prayer stone. It was a rock that was wrapped in in a piece of fabric and tied off real neatly, and we were supposed to lay it on our bed, on our pillow at night. And so if we forget to pray before we go to bed, we smack our heads on it, and the stone serves as a reminder to pray. Yes, that's what's wrong with me still to this day. Evidently, I forgot to pray one too many times. The scriptures tell us that these stones serve as reminders. These stones serve as as reminders to the people of Israel of what God has already done in their past. Now, we could spend a lot of time talking about all the things that that God did and all the things that, that he said and all the ways that God delivered them, but there's something interesting nestled a little bit further down in this section of Scripture. In Joshua chapter 4, if you have a Bible, let's skim down a little bit farther, and we'll go to this obscure verse where this obscure thing is mentioned that may not mean anything to you until we actually tie a little bow on top of this passage, and it says this, Joshua chapter 4, verse 19, the people came up out of the Jordan River on the 10th day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. On the 10th day of the first month, that's a really important day, do you know why? That's a massively important day, because this is not the only time in the Bible that the 10th day of the first month is mentioned. Actually, It's not the first time that the 10th day of the first month is mentioned as a time we should remember. If you go all the way back to Exodus chapter 12, it's the first time God mentions the 10th day of the first month. The 10th day of the first month, the Israelites were still, in, were still enslaved in Egypt, and they were supposed to take a lamb, the firstborn lamb, on the 10th day of the first month, and select that lamb and set it apart as one who would be slaughtered so that God could deliver them from the hands of the Egyptians. He's doing it yet again. In Exodus 12, he delivered the, the, the Israelites from the Egyptians. Here in Joshua chapter 4, he's delivering them from the hands of the river, reminding them of his presence in the past, determining his presence in the future. Stones are enduring. Stones are never fading. Stones are solid. They're sturdy. They serve as reminders tenth day of the first month wasn't only mentioned in Exodus 12, and it wasn't only mentioned in Joshua 4. As a matter of fact, it's mentioned again in the New Testament because that very same Passover, that very same sacrificial lamb, that very same celebration that happens on the tenth day of the first month happened again in the Gospels when Jesus took his twelve men, his, his twelve disciples, and they gathered in the upper room to celebrate the Passover. The very same thing they remembered on that very first tenth day of the first month as they were leaving Egypt. And as Jesus 
gathers his disciples around. He, he passes bread around the table, much like we'll do later today. And he passes wine around the table. And he says, take, eat, and take, drink. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember this moment. Never forget. This weekend of Memorial Day, we pause to remember. We remember not just the stones of memorial that stand in our nation's capital, not the stones of the pyramids or, or the stones of the Parthenon or the stones of Stonehenge, but we remember the stones, the stones that stand in Arlington National Cemetery. 400,000 of them, countless thousands more around the world, stones of men and women who have gone before us, stones of, of the men and women who have stood to defend the freedoms that we enjoy, that we probably take for granted most days. This weekend is a weekend to pause and remember. We fill this weekend with all sorts of fun activities. We do barbecues and pool parties. We have these great big block things, and we, we maybe even set off some fireworks and blow some things up, which that's okay. I got some of people's attention when I said that. Some of you got excited by blowing things up. Relax. It's okay. But we pause to remember. We remember sacrifice. We remember the lives lost. We remember the men and women who stood for our freedoms, but today this gathering isn't just about those 400,000 memorial stones in Arlington National Cemetery, it's about another stone. Because just a few days after Jesus celebrated that meal with his disciples, just a few days after Jesus gathered with his disciples in that upper room, just a few days after he said, take this, do this in remembrance of me, just a few days later another stone was put in place. But this stone didn't last. This stone wasn't an enduring stone. You see, when Jesus breathed his last, his, his arms outstretched on the cross, he said, it is finished. And he commended his spirit to the Lord and they buried him in a tomb and they rolled a stone in place. Stones are enduring. Every single stone will last but this one. And this stone that didn't last is our stone. This stone that didn't last is a stone that means the most to you and me. And so as we pause to remember the lives lost, we remember the greatest life that was lost on our behalf. Because three days after that stone was rolled in place, it was moved again. Three days after that immovable stone was placed in front of the tomb, it was gone. Three days after that stone sealed the grave of Jesus, it was gone. And Jesus was no longer there. Three days is all that stone lasted, and it was gone. Stones are enduring. Stones last, and stones remind us that that stone, that stone is the marker of our future. That stone is the marker of our hope. That stone and its absence is a reminder that heaven is our resting place, that heaven is our eternal home. Our gospel reading this morning says that greater love has no one than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus was willing to lay his life down for you and me. Men and women who have fought and died within our country have laid down their lives for you and me. None of those men or women have moved the stone. They rest peacefully beneath their stones. But Jesus, Jesus is risen. His stone is no longer in place. His stone has become our stone. A stone of remembrance, marking us as redeemed, marking us as risen, marking us as free because of his sacrifice. I encourage you to take a moment this weekend and pause. Take a moment and look at stones Maybe just the stones like what lie in your grass. Maybe the stones in your driveway. Maybe walk through a cemetery and see the stones that have flags beside them. The stones with crosses etched on top. And remember that a sacrifice was made for that stone to be there. But don't 
forget to look past that stone. Look beyond that stone to a stone that no longer exists. Look beyond those stones of our mortal remembrance to see the stone that's been rolled away that shows that we, one day, will rise with Jesus. And may that be your eternal stone of remembrance. Would you pray with me? Gracious Father, we are in awe of the ways that you have provided for us. We are in awe of the stones, the stones that mark our past, the stones that determine our future. Lord, help us to be slow enough in our lives to remember what each of those stones mean. Lord, help us to pause long enough to reflect on each stone and the life it represents. Because each of those stones of our past determine, <laughs> determine where we're headed in our future. And so, Lord, for the men and the women who have lost their lives in service of this country and for the families who were willing to endure that sacrifice, we thank you. We pray that you would wrap them in your arms. But more importantly, Lord, we pray that you would show them the stone that no longer exists. The stone that has rolled away. The stone that reminds us that you are our cornerstone. The one upon whom our very lives are built. May your stone be our stone of remembrance. Amen.